Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship on Trinity Sunday. It is a chilly Sunday in Chicagoland, but we are worshiping and rejoicing that the sun is at least out. It's good to have people joining us on Zoom and on Facebook Live and on YouTube and live streaming on our website. However you have found us, welcome. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, if you are joining us on Facebook, let us know you're here. Uh, we, our Facebook feed is monitored during our live stream, so we like to welcome you here and have conversation with you as much as we can on the Facebook stream. As always, the Zoom chat window is active and busy as we welcome each other to worship. It is good to see people and cats and dogs and happy faces this morning. This is Trinity Sunday. The Sunday after Pentecost is always Trinity Sunday, where we celebrate the Holy Trinity. So I'm glad you've come to be a part of this. All of our music this morning in worship is covered under our CCLI license for performance and streaming so that we are paying the appropriate fees and doing the right things. Before we get into our worship this morning, let us settle in and take a moment to be still and quiet. So many of us have such little stillness and quiet in our lives, and that's where God speaks the loudest. So let us be still. And breathe in and out the spirit. And as we do so, we know that God is God, and we are not. And we give thanks for that. And as we breathe in and out the spirit together, we begin our worship this morning in song. who was and is and is to come. As this day begins, Christ be with us. Be in our hearts and in our minds. 
be in our souls and in our spirits, be in our thoughts and in our desires. As the day begins, Christ walks walk beside us. Show us the love only you can give. Show us the light only you can provide. Show us the wholeness only you can reveal. As this day begins, Christ surrounds us. Circle us with your presence. Keep protection near and danger far. Bring us the assurance of your love. God, our Father, long-suffering, full of grace and truth. You create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your son and bring us to heavenly joy in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to God's self, forgive us our sins and assure us of God's eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you.
So then, brothers and sisters, we are debaters, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to, to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are, the ch that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't, do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up with the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oops. So an event happened this week that was huge for the pop culture of our time. Anybody know what happened this week that was huge for the pop culture of our time? It was the Friends reunion, y'all. The Friends reunion happened this week. That was a super important event for those of us who are pop culture followers and for those of us who came of age with the Friends cast. Um, Friends ran for 10 seasons and for at least 30 years now, um, people have watched and celebrated and participated with, with the friends who wrestled with what it's like to learn to be adults in the world and to navigate the joys and chaos of community. They fell in love and fell out of love. They had jobs and lost jobs. They had fun, they cried, they celebrated, they had children. 
They were a community in and of themselves. And Friends is one of the series that is almost always listed in the top 10 lists of all time viewed TV shows. Friends is a huge phenomenon when it comes to television. And as much as they did together and as much as we watch them do, and as many things as those of us who were devotees of the show could repeat that they said, one thing they never had to do is to navigate life alone as adults because they were always together. And maybe that's one of the reasons it continues to be so popular. The effortless community they had together seems so appealing to us and their constant togetherness and community draws us in. I imagine this is true, especially now, because isolation and loneliness have been skyrocketing for many, many years in our society. Even before the pandemic, three in five adults in the United States considered themselves lonely. Think about that. Three in five people, adults in the United States, considered themselves lonely before the pandemic, before the isolation, before we were quarantined to our homes. In the United States, pre-pandemic, one in five millennials say that they have no friends at all. One in five of the millennial generation before the pandemic, before we were locked down, before we were isolated, said that they had no friends at all. Is it a wonder we watch the show Friends? Because the scope of loneliness in the United States has grown and shifted drastically. In the book, The Lonely Century, uh, researcher Norena Hertz says, that loneliness is about feeling disconnected, not only from those we are meant to feel intimate with, but also from ourselves. Loneliness is not only lacking support in a social or familial context, but feeling politically and economically excluded as well. She goes on to say, I believe the contemporary manifestation of loneliness goes beyond our yearning for connection with those physically around us our craving for love and being loved, and the sadness we feel when we consider ourselves to be bereft of friends. Loneliness also incorporates how disconnected we feel from politicians and politics, how cut off we feel from our work and our workplace, how excluded many of us feel from society's gains, and how powerless, invisible, and voiceless, so many of us believe ourselves to be. Three in five US adults pre-pandemic connected with that, felt that, and believed they in themselves embodied that view of themselves in the world. So loneliness tracks, does someone feel connected to and valued by others? Do they feel like they matter in the world? Now, why this is happening is obviously a complex issue. There's no question that the structure of life is less communal than it used to be generations ago. Living situations, working situations have changed. We aren't living in households with multiple generations in the most part. Many of us aren't working in large groups of people and certainly post pandemic, very few of us are working with large groups of people. In society, we have less time for clubs and organizations. Membership in long-standing organizations has dropped precipitously around the globe. We have less participation in faith communities, which is one of the driving factors as well. Hertz says that the infrastructure of community, by which she means shared physical spaces where people of all stripes can come together and interact and form bonds. So those communal spaces of coming together, the gathering places in community, have been severely neglected at best and at worst actively destroyed. So we're lonely. And this is bad, obviously. It's tragic for mental health. We know this to be true. The thing is, it's also horrible for your physical health. If you are lonely, you have a 29% higher risk of coronary heart disease, 29% greater risk, a 32% greater risk of stroke, and a 64% higher risk of developing clinical dementia. 
64%. If you feel lonely or are socially isolated, you are almost 30% more likely to die prematurely than if you are not. That is a greater reduction in life expectancy than chain smoking, than many cancers, than many other things. And they say, researchers say, that even short-term bouts with loneliness can have a serious negative impact long-term, which is why looking at the results of the pandemic are especially frightening to people who do loneliness research. But on the plus side, one thing the researchers point to is a way to add health and years back to life expectancy, a way to pull out of loneliness and isolation, and they say it would add at least seven years back to your life expectancy is to be a part of a faith-based community. <laughs> Researchers speculate that it isn't just identifying as religious that does this, but being an active part of the community that matters. So I suppose I should insert a shameless plug right here for diving into life as part of St. G's community, for worshiping every Sunday, for doing things that keep you an active part of the community. And I do, I shamelessly plug that. It's good for your life. It's good for your health, physical, mental, and social. And yet, and yet we don't need to worship our community. We don't need to worship church because we worship God, right? We don't come here because we want to extend our lifespan. Although, hey, huge plus, we come because we worship God. And y'all, God's very nature God's very being is a community of love. We worship and follow a God who is relationship at the core. We worship and follow a God who is community at the core. We worship and follow a God who is love anchored in communal existence. Being a part of this community extends lifespan and helps us not be lonely because God is community, because God at God's core is love anchored in community, because being a part of this is being a part of that God. And yes, this is Holy Trinity Sunday, the Sunday where we acknowledge and explore and rejoice that the kingdom of God, which we hear over and over again in scripture, the kingdom of God is, the kingdom of God, Trinity Sunday tells us, is relationship. The kingdom of God is relationship because God is relationship. Our experience of God is relational because God is relational. On Pentecost last Sunday, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit poured into us and so are filled and strengthened and accompanied by the third person of the Trinity. The Trinity is complicated. It's complex, three persons, one and three, three and one, singular, yet unified. The doctrines are complicated. People have fought wars over them. It's a mystery to us, but not a whodunit that we figure out, right? The word mystery in this context means revelation, it means how God reveals God's self to us. So the mystery of the Trinity is how God reveals God's self to us, how God reveals what the kingdom of God is to us, and what we know through the doctrine, the story, the truth of the Trinity of the Godhead is that God reveals God's self to us in relationship, in community, in unity of love. We can get tied up and wrapped around the complexity of something we can never fully understand, which is the Trinity. St. Augustine said, if you can understand it, it's not God. Or we can rest fully and perfectly in the reality that God is perfect love and relationship. And we are invited, we are welcomed, we are fully embraced into that relationship and love. We hear today, God sent the son not to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved might be saved by seeing firsthand, by being drawn into the mystery, by touching and feeling and knowing that God is relationship and that we are surrounded, filled and propelled into and because of the intense love of the relationship that is God. Beloved, we are never alone because we are, to use Paul's words, adopted by God, drawn into God, and living in the relationship that is God's love. 
That doesn't mean that we don't feel loneliness, maybe sometimes, maybe often, for some of us, maybe always. Doesn't mean that we might not feel at times and maybe a lot of the time disconnected or excluded or invisible or unloved or powerless because this world has structures that cause us to feel that way. We live in a society that often points us in that direction. And also our faith anchors us in the truth that counters that. The truth that while we may be those things to the world around us, we are always, always fully loved fully embraced, fully empowered by God who is relationship. And part of our call is to embrace that and to share it, to be ever mindful and aware of those who clearly feel outside the abundant embrace of profound love and do everything within our power to help everyone understand they are loved. They are incredibly and eternally valued and endlessly empowered to share that love with the world. If I titled sermons, some people are wont to do that, I would probably call this sermon the one where I do not compare the Trinity to friends, because I do not want it to go down to say that I have come on Trinity Sunday to compare the Holy Trinity to the TV show Friends. Not happening. Friends does, however, help us point to our need for community. It reminds us of our need for connectivity. It draws out in us our longing for love in a relationship that hole within us that was built to tether us to God and God's loving embrace. The actors in the Friends show started every show before they filmed with a huddle. They physically surrounded themselves with each other, put their arms around each other to connect physically, to remind themselves of their unity, their relationship, and their love for each other. As Christians, we have ritual and liturgy to remind ourselves of our connectivity to God. We say the creed that remind us that God's community, the sacraments draw us further into the grace of God's love. And when we're anchored in that, our community itself can show and share that love to ourselves and others. So while I'm not comparing the Trinity to friends, the theme song, like much music when heard through the ears of faith, can remind us of God's relational presence. I will not sing it. You're welcome. But I will say one of the verses that we didn't often hear. No one could ever know me. No one could ever see me. Seems you're the only one that knows what it's like to be me. Someone to face the day with, make it through all the rest with. Someone I'll always laugh with. Even at my worst, I'm best with you. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too. Please join me at home in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bind ourselves, O oh God, today to the strong name of the Trinity, and we name you three in one, one in three, and claim our place in your community of love. We are embraced, loving God, embraced in the community that is the heart, not just of our church, but also in the community that is the very heart of who you are. Three in one, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Within that great love, we are held and treasured. We pray for our hurting world, that war makers will find peace, that the hungry will find food, that refugees will find shelter, that injustice will be answered with all that is right and good. We pray for the world. Offer your prayers for the world. We pray for all the leaders in the world. We pray especially for those holding and finding peace in the Middle East and other places. Are there other prayers we have for the world? We pray for India. For me and more. Colombia. For all these things, Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us, within us, behind us, and before us. We pray for all who suffer and struggle, for those we love dearly, for those we barely know, for those whose suffering we have ignored. Be present in the healing touch of all hands that help the sick and suffering and send your spirit to comfort and protect all who need you. We pray for those who suffer and struggle. God, you'd offer your prayers in the chat for those who suffer, for all who are lonely and isolated, for Allie, Owen, Hudson, Polly, Dorothy, Jim, for Steve B, for Rob and Sandy, for friends with cancer, for John and Catherine, for Bob and Dabney, for Gary, Mary, and Jean, for Kathy and Bridget, for Anna, Adi, and Noor, for Carl, Amy, for Shelly, uh, for Carol and Shelly. For Amy. For all these and more, for Catherine and the entire Duncan family. For all these, Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us, within us, behind us, before us. We pray for all who are joyful. We rejoice at the promise of new life and old lives made new. We celebrate the movement through milestones, births, graduation, new jobs, new relationships, the promise of something wonderful. We pray for the joyful. I invite you to offer your prayers for the joyful things for all graduates, especially this week, Caden, Leah, and Kate. For family coming to visit this week, for the beauty of nature, for Charlotte's daughter, home and new job, for Zena's new job in Nashville. For Nigel's fourth birthday. For Donna Shelton's retirement. Congratulations, Donna Shelton. For all these, including grandchildren, families, those who are adoptive family for the last week of school. Amen. We rejoice. 
for the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who married this week. Hey, congratulations. For all our joys, Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us, within us, behind us, before us. We pray for those who mourn and those who have died. We believe that they live eternally in your community of love. Surround them in the light of your grace. On this Memorial Day, we especially pray for those who died in service to our country. We pray for those who have died. This week we pray especially for Elena Wilson, for mom, dad, and Dana, for Dina, Bernie, Iris, and Doc, for all who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. We honor them this weekend. For Debbie Welker, for Chris Duncan. For Faye, for Kurt. For all the saints in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us, within us, behind us, before us. We bind ourselves, O God, today to the strong name of the Trinity, and we name you three in one, one in three, and claim our place in your community of love. Be with us, within us, behind us, before us. May we be your comfort, your restoration and your peace and wholeness in the world. Amen. Beloved, we give you thanks for all of your generosity to the mission and ministry of St. G's and invite you at this time as you are able to offer your financial generosity to our work in the world. You can do so online at stg'schurch.org. It is simple to give uh, that way. You can give to our operating budget, which supports all that we do uh, here in the church, in the community, and in the world. You can also give specifically to food ministries. Uh, as many of you may know, St. G's Faith and Action Fund doubles all contributions to the food pantries through stg'schurch.org, so that every month we give twice as much to the food pantry as is given. So if you feel called to do that, we also invite you to do that. Beloved ones, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, let us walk into this day. Your light before us, your shield behind us, your friends beside us. Lord, let us walk into this week. Your life before us, your strength behind us, your love around us. Lord, let us walk from this place. Your wisdom before us, your truth behind us, your breath within us. Lord, let us walk into the world. Gratitude in our hearts, thanksgiving on our lips, joy in our spirits. Lord, let us walk into your loving presence. In the name of the one who loves us, in the name of the one who cares, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in three, three in one. Beloved, may God bless you and keep you. Amen. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May God's countenance lift upon you and give you peace. Amen. And the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of the holy undivided Trinity. In the name of God. Amen. Beloved, we have things to talk about in the life of the community of St. G's. We are starting this Friday. Friday night flicks are back. Woohoo! And the community rejoices out in the St. G's parking lot. Movies are commencing every Friday evening this month. They will be at 8.30 p.m. This week, the movie is Coco. If you have not seen this movie, it is so sweet and dear. It is a Disney movie. Um, I think it's Disney. It's animated. It's fabulous. It is incredibly well done. Next week, a jolly family favorite, Evan Almighty. I could recite, I think, the whole movie in my sleep. And on June 25th, Sandlot. So bring your chairs, bring a cooler if you want, bring snacks and popcorn, and come hang out in the parking lot. Bring all your friends and let's watch movies together in community. And new this year, um, food truck Fridays in the St. G's parking lot. This Friday, we're having a food truck Friday. It is tacos. So I brought for you a visual aid. I have my action figure of Taco Jesus. Can you see? He is holding tacos in his hand. Taco Jesus. Um, it is tacos this Friday from six to eight. This is a new thing that we are doing as part of the St. G's community in the world uh, to help build community, to help bring people together. And we do love to share joy and hope, build community and feed people at St. G's. And if Food Truck Friday doesn't do all three, I don't know what does. The thing about this is we pay in advance for the food truck. And so if people don't come and eat the tacos, then we have put money out um, for the food truck that isn't reimbursed, which is fine. We are happy to do this to help build community. And also it would be great if we had a ton of people eating the tacos to pay a lot of this back. So come this Friday, bring all your friends, tell everybody you know. We think this is going to be a great new tradition in the St. G's parking lot. So this Friday, it is tacos. $15 will get you two tacos and a side and a drink and a ton of fun. So you can come get your tacos and watch the movie or just eat tacos or just watch the movie. But this Friday is going to be super fun in the St. G's parking lot. Um, I think everybody knows we've put it in the newsletter. David, Debbie Welker's funeral is Saturday, June 19th at St. John's in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, all are invited to come and attend that. It will be in person at 10 Eastern in Virginia and 9 Central. It is going to stream on YouTube. So if you are unable to make the trip, uh, you can watch it on YouTube live stream. You can get that link in our newsletter. Also, we decided this week that we will put a screen up in the chapel. Uh, and if people want to come and watch the funeral together in community, so you have the support of uh, friends and St. G's family as we grieve the loss of beloved Debbie, you can do that. We will have a sign up so we know how many people are coming in this week's newsletter. Uh, Max Smith, our beloved deacon, will be here in person uh, while the funeral is happening. I will be in Virginia preaching at her funeral. Uh, so we invite everybody to participate and celebrate the life of sweet Debbie. Speaking of celebrating lives, Chris Duncan, oh, sweet Chris, um, we are, they are having a memorial gathering, call it a big old party on Sunday, June 27th. Every St. G's person is invited to attend. It was important to Chris and to Catherine that the St. G's community, which they thrive in, feels surrounded by be able to be a important part of his memorial gathering. And so we are all invited on Sunday, June 27th, come to church and then we'll go together to the Highland Park Community House. It will be from one to four. The buffet, I believe, opens around one. There's a big lunch. Uh, there will be lots of fun, ton of music, obviously. Uh, opportunities for merriment and sharing fun stories about Chris. I'm assured there will be hilarity and lots of tech geekiness happening. And I have secrets I'm not sharing about some of the fun that will surround that, but everybody's invited, big lunch, big party, big fun to remember sweet, sweet beloved Chris and to love on Catherine. So all are invited, more information to come soon. Speaking of community, dear ones, stick around. We will have virtual coffee hour here on Zoom. Those of you who have joined us on Facebook, uh, we thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day. And now.